봐. 그리고 야, 이제 내가 잡 빨리. 내가 잡. The oak laths must be true and straight of grain. The slightest cross graining and they snap like a matchstick. Advanced preparation is vital for this job. This is it now. Keep it over against the board. Over against the board. The tannin in the oak combines with the water to stain the timber and make a pleasing contrast. Clinker or clencher built boats, where the strakes overlap each other and are held in place by rivets, are of very great antiquity. The method, as far as we know, arrived in Ireland with the Vikings as early as the 9th century. When completed, the boat will be examined by the measurers appointed by the governing body. She must conform to the specifications laid down for the class. One extra rib or a two inch discrepancy in the beam could mean rejection. Jimmy must constantly check the position of the hull on the stocks so it does not shift out of alignment and take an irreversible set to one side or the other. The width of the beam at 4 foot 10 inches is also checked and wooden props hold this position for without the thwarts or seats in place the hull can easily distort. The gunnel adds strength to the garboard streak and completes the hull. The mighty Shannon and the Great Lakes of Ireland dictated and shaped the development of the traditional open rowing boat. For 18 feet, it seems, is the perfect length to combat their steep, short waves. But if the turn of the century saw the decline of the larger sailing boats that Jimmy's grandfather captained, it welcomed the increase in popularity of the centreboard open sailing boat. Races were organised, timed competitions took place and cups were won. But the vexing problem of conformity raised its watery head and a complex and unsatisfactory system of handicapping ensured the inevitable rancour and argument. It was decided to introduce the one design for open 18-foot sailing boats for Shannon sailing with a gunter rig and carrying a single lug sail of not more than 140 square feet. The First World War delayed any plans for establishing a standard, and it was not until 1920 that F. C. Morgan Giles, a leading English yacht designer of the day, was asked by a joint committee representing the Shannon Yacht Clubs to design an open sailing boat based on their specifications. This was to be the Shannon One design.
I've never been out of Ireland. I've I have always lived here. I've never I've been to Dublin a few times. That's all. So uh, I'd never had the inkling to move too far. Except I moved along the Shannon. That's roughly as far as I went. It's a bit late now to start to start travelling. <laughs> If you got the taste of, 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 of life away now, you might be inclined to come back. <laughs> so you mightn't. The first model I made it was a model of a Shannon one design, an inch and a half to the foot. I love model making. It's something you wouldn't get to continue at, like making bigger boats. But it's 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 very satisfying when you have when you have something made after after a long time. Usually I use you for planking and and bog oak for some of the finishing inside and boxwood. I'm making a model of a, a Swedish Iron Age boat. I don't know will I ever get finished, <laughs> so I don't. She's a, a strange boat. There's risers hewn out each plank under each frame, which is very difficult to do. So I don't know whether I'll, 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 I'll be able to get it done or not, but if you try hard enough, I suppose it'll work a way out to do it. We have a lot of trouble getting good timber today. With the Shannon, it's a large keel, oak stem post and oak ribs, white deal planking and mahogany seats or teak and mahogany centerboard casing. So you have a variety of timbers. The mahogany is easy enough to get, but the, but the white deal, you have, you have trouble in picking it. And larch is not easy to come by either good quality large. So you have, uh, you have a bit of travelling to do for it. And Jimmy's travels have taken him to Cohen's timber yard in Tullamore to select timber suitable for the centreboard casing, amongst other things. That's right. 